Hey everybody, welcome back. God bless you. I hope you're all doing well and I hope you're all safe and I hope you're all out of the way of any bad, bad weather. I know it's happening all over the world and uh, I, know, I know the Northeast is getting hit really hard in the United States. So, with that said, uh, I apologize that I didn't get back for us to finish our study in Matthew 24, but I was pulled in a completely different direction. And um, it was a message that God has been bringing to my attention for a while, and I really didn't want to uh, go there, but um, it's not up to me. And I'm just the messenger okay so everybody I uh, hope you know that time is short we are running out of time and uh, for those of you that have been here since the beginning uh, I had a blog and uh, before I started the YouTube channel and it was all about healing, healing the heart, rending our hearts to God, taking his heart, which is truest, the truest way that we are in him. It's the only way. It's the only way to please him is to take the heart of Christ and the mind of Christ. And it's a steep order because we have to lay down so many things of ourselves. And it's a process. It's something that pretty much we need to do daily. And uh, he'll reveal more and more to us, so it just gets tighter and tighter. And um, that was where I began the YouTube channel to warn of the coming judgment and what we are be, to be doing, what he laid on my heart about rending our hearts. And, of course, my blog is gone. I lost everything that was there, so it's kaput. But, um, you know, I've stayed here. And uh, though we're a small group and we grow every day, but many are not listening. So, for whatever reasons. So, with that said, um, I just hope that we are all praying, rending our, our hearts to God because. If we're not taking his heart, we cannot see his plan. We cannot, we will be blinded. And Jesus will even become a stumbling block to us that we claim he is our savior. If that's the truth. Because God has a plan. And we are getting really close really really close guys because once the number of the Gentiles those that are all brought in through Christ that are not of the natural seed of Jacob once that number is fulfilled I hope you realize prophecy is already getting pretty far in and we're, it's, a, it's the, tri the, the tribulation is already happening I mean we are in times like no other right now. And I, I hope that you realize that God is going to bring in the fullness of the Gentiles and then he's going to wake up his people. And that Israel was blinded so that John 3.16 would be fulfilled which was the cross which was everything Jesus came for and if we don't understand the plan well we can have a hardness in our heart and uh, you know we are to be fishers of men and Paul said we are to pity the natural seat we're to pity them they might be enemies of a in the gospel 
but we are to be an example. We are to also be fishing. We are to be showing them the awesomeness of God's salvation for them to be envious of us, of, of the peace that we have and the Holy Spirit. But that's not happening. And so if we, if we have any hardness in our hearts against people, that God has prophesied that he's going to do something magnificent. I mean, you, you know, guys, we're going to be really surprised when we're sitting at Christ's table of who's going to be there and who's not. We're going to be shocked. His plan is perfect. And so, I have been laid on my heart for quite some time about national repentance. Repentance of our own personal sins and repentance for our nation. Because it's much needed. It's much needed. And we're in some dark days. And it's going to get darker. And I told you the children are not safe. They're not. They haven't been. And it's going to get darker and darker. And as a nation, that's because as a people, that blood is on our hands. It truly is. Because, you know, guys, the womb is the most sacred place in the whole world for human life. And that has been disregarded. And people march in the streets for this supposed right. And the blood of innocence has spilled. And it continues. And it continues. And if there's no regard for human life in the womb, there will be no regard for the children that are here. It puts a spirit of death on the land. And... Let me tell you something. The awesomeness of our Savior and the price he paid on the cross for those of us who have committed this act, it is covered in repentance. Because I can tell you something, that when women make this decision, and it's legal, it's legal. Had it not been legal, many probably would not choose that option. But when women have done this, they go through something, a living hell, a self-loathing, a private, deep, dark pit. And no one wants to talk about that. And even if you find salvation and you find your Lord and Savior and you've repented, a lot of times women cannot forgive themselves. And I can tell you that please don't fall into that trap I fell into that. And I'll tell you what. It's another trick of the devil. Because when Christ fulfilled everything on that cross. He paid for all sin. And if we can't forgive ourselves for something. 
well, then we're saying that the cross wasn't enough. That what Jesus went up there and did and shed his blood and suffered and took in all sin, all death, all disease, all curses, that that's not enough for what we did. And you see how that's a trick of the devil. Because that's saying, well, the cross just isn't enough to forgive me. I believe I'm forgiven by God, but I can't forgive myself. Well, he commands us to forgive. And that includes ourselves, ladies. And even men, if they feel they had a hand in something like that. But I can tell you, as a nation, we're under that judgment. It's going to get worse. And when I said the children are not safe, they are not. They are not safe even at the, their own hands, of, the hands of their own parents. This is why we're seeing these calamities. This is why we're also seeing children kill children. This is why we're seeing all the wickedness against children. You know, the worst crimes are the ones against children. That's no lie. And it's happening in our country. It's happening in our nation. And just as Daniel repented for himself and his nation, I hope that each one of us is doing that. And I hope we're going through the heart-rending process as much as possible for God to get that out of our hearts because I'm going to tell you something. There is a darkness in humanity. In that carnal man. And it will be in there and we will be ignorant to it. And we will find ourselves on the wrong side of God's will. We will start finding hatred in our hearts. And I'm going to tell you something. That is the number one MO of the enemy. Is that he offends your heart and gets you to hate. Even hate those flesh humans that are doing his bidding. And any time we take that into our hearts, and we don't find peace with it and forgive or accept the truth of it, then we can find ourselves hardened in our hearts. Because what I am saying is that is how the enemy operates. He will make things so dark and evil through humanity, through the, the, through the acts of the flesh to where we will become hardened and dark. That is why God said, be angry and sin not. And don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't take that into your heart and let it grow into a seed, whether it be against anyone. Because it will all be revealed. And it's just, it's, you know, the, you got to realize even the leadership that is sitting there operating in the beast they're not even in their right minds guys they couldn't they couldn't stop themselves if they wanted to because god's on the throne and they're going to do some heinous things because it's prophesied that they would prophecy is going to come in to fruition and we as the body of christ are supposed to be the intercessors we're supposed to be the intercessors for those that are shrouded in darkness. We're supposed to be the one repenting and covering and interceding. Not taking in darkness in our own hearts. God kept leading me to Isaiah 59 lately. It's been going on for a while and you know, my message here has always been about the glory 
the awesome, the power of our Savior. And for us to understand the whole plan. And to glorify him. And I'm not one that goes around beating the sheep or kicking the sheep. So I really didn't want to go down this road and, and to, but it does glorify our Savior and it does show us our depravity and our darkness and how really bad we are without a Savior. And that's what Isaiah 59 is about. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You, you got to realize when we are grafted in through to the vine with Christ through salvation and the cross, you got to realize that that doesn't exclude us from when God calls down a judgment. Okay, because it's just as much on our nation as it is the nation Israel over in the promised land. When he tells us something that if we don't adhere to it, those curses come upon us. That judgment will come upon us as a nation. And we cannot have any darkness in our hearts or we can find ourselves on the wrong side of God, whether we're saved or not. We can be out of his will. And if we're out of his will, then we are operating in the flesh and the offenses. And that is why Satan does these things. And I can tell you that it's going to shake many people's faith when things just get so bad for the children. Because people, even Christians, are going to go, oh, how could God do this? How could God allow this? How could God allow this when it's us? Because innocent blood has to be avenged. So it's no wonder that we're seeing all these heinous crimes against children. Because if we're not going to regard as a nation the most precious protected place in the universe of life, which is the womb. Well then, it's not going to be respected, considered outside the womb. And you're going to hear more and more because that's a spirit of death over children. And it's ugly. And all that blood is going to be avenged. God says so. So we have a lot of soul searching to do in our hearts, renting them to God, taking his heart, his mind, arming ourselves with his mind and his heart. And interceding and praying and repenting of ourselves and our nation. Because dark days are coming. There are children suffering all over the world. There are children suffering greatly in this nation, too. At the very hands of their own parents. Murdering. And I'm talking murder. Terrible murders. I'm talking children are not safe even from pedophilia. Pedophiles. Stalkers. Traffickers. Murderers. It's gotten worse and worse and worse. And as technology increases, it gets worse and worse and worse. 
You know, pedophiles were really bad in my town when I was a kid. That's 50 years ago. Now they have the, at their fingertips, anything they want to see that feeds that, that horrific evil spirit. And the sickening thing is, is that the ones that are at the top of these rings, that they are elite, well, they're still doing whatever it is they're doing. You might hear about a pedophile ring getting busted, but it never goes up to the chain uh, to the top where, where it's all getting done for and uh, you're not here in the big names but their, their day's coming God will avenge the innocent he will so with that said I want to go to Isaiah 59 it's basically talking about what is the cause of the breach in humanity? And it's sin. That is sin. And it's in our flesh. As a people, as a creation. It's pretty ugly. God has offered us salvation. And anytime we're operating in the flesh, even if we're saved, anytime we're operating in the flesh, well, that flesh is convicted of these things because in the flesh is something pretty evil it's pretty evil and you can see when I get done with this chapter and we get to the end of it you can see why God interceded and sent us an intercessor someone to stand in our place remove our blood guiltiness blood on our hands to human race Spiritually and physically. And we've all been guilty of these things. In some way, shape, or form. On some level, we've all been guilty. And so when we want to point a finger at any group of people or any person, any individual, we need to stop and look at the stains that were on us that Jesus washed off. The stains that were even in our hearts. The things we thought. If it's, if it's a thought in your heart, and we've all had horrific thoughts. You know, the darkness of the flesh is in everybody. We're all capable of some pretty heinous things in the flesh. That's the truth. And we should be thanking God on our knees that he sent his son and that we found him. And he's cleaning us up. It'll be revealed here in Isaiah 59. So that's where I'm going. <clears throat> Isaiah 59. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. No, no. Let's not put, let's, let's say it's not God, okay? No, he... He, this is his desire. His desire is for salvation. To reach his hand out. That it's saving grace. His ear is too inclined to hear us, okay? But why doesn't he? It's humanity. What is, what is he saying here? He says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you. That he will not hear He's talking to Israel here, guys. But it's beyond that. It's also humanity. This is the hearts of men, okay? And what is he talking about? Our iniquities. He's talking about our moral, evil crimes, our depraved actions, our faults. Those things that lead us into mischief of the flesh. He's talking about even perversity and evil. And that is what we are without him, guys. 
and this brings on an end by destruction where crimes will be punished by the sword whether it be on an individual or a nation and if we're his if we're his you know he expects more out of us out of obedience to take his heart and his mind so this is what separates us this is the way we were before we had us before we accepted our savior we were separated and he hid his face from us he didn't show us all the favor that he desired to Verse 3, for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. There is so much being said in this verse here. The hands soiled with blood. He's talking about the blood, the murder of innocence, the slaughter. Soilness. Being soiled is defiled, polluted, stained. Blood of innocence. It's a slaughter. And there's even cities, nations guilty of this slaughter. And the biggest one being abortion. When it's most sacred place, safe place of children is the unborn. And I'm going to tell you how here's how the double mindedness works. It's even in our society. If a pregnant mother is murdered, killed, even accidentally, in a car accident or any kind of accident, if she's pregnant, there will be two counts. Two counts of murder or two counts of manslaughter. Whatever. Yet, yet, we, as laws and a nation, declare that if a mother decides she does not want to be a mother and to carry that child terminates it and that's not murder that's what our law would like us to believe and you can't have it both ways murder is murder either if um, just if there's no power in us as women and mothers to decide whether or not it's murder or just because we don't desire to give birth it's in our faces guys it's double mindedness it completely one doesn't support the other we're women are not god we don't get to say who lives and dies but that's what the law says do you understand that will not be tolerated well there's a price for that there is a price can you just imagine all the blood shed of abortion if God just dumped that blood into the streets I can't I can't but that's what's happening that is what's happening in this darkness of humanity because if there's no regard for the sanctity of life in the womb there will be none on the children or the innocent on the land it's it's really disturbing so here he's even talking about child trafficking murders pedophilia the whole the whole gamut guys any kind of any kind of crime against children or the innocent the helpless you know i haven't spoke much about the school shootings i have kept my mouth silent on it but if we are not opening our eyes of what happened to that school in Florida. 
that it was a disturbed, very disturbed young man who had suffered much tragic loss. He was an orphan to begin with, was adopted, and lost both of his adoptive parents. I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you how we get to this point. And I'm telling you that no one paid attention. And though he was obviously struggling, there, there was no help for him. And I'm going to tell you something. It's designed that there's no help for, the, for, the, for these type of problems. If you think the mental health system is the answer, I got news for you. It's more broken and dysfunctional than the behavior of those that are hurting. Everyone wants to pass a buck. I can tell you, dealing firsthand with the mental health system for as long as I have, trying to get someone help that's in dire need and in danger, a danger to themselves and others, I can tell you, I can tell you the honest truth that there is no real answer. There's no real help because the system is so broken and the passing the buck, there is, it's, it's now prisons and jails. That's their answer. Waiting until something horrible happens because even if they do keep this person, they're not getting real help. They're not getting meaningful help. And you want to know why, guys? Because this is our job. As the body of Christ, this is our job. To cover, to pray. When someone is possessed or obsessed or oppressed, We need to come together. But instead, we just call something evil and shun it. And we're not covering, we're not pleading the blood. We're not intercessing for God to touch something. I'm just saying, I've lived it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> the fingers, you know, he says, your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. And your lips have spoken lies. And we are all guilty of this kind of stuff here. You know, Jesus upped the bar. You know that? He upped the bar. So that even if we're angry... with our brethren, if we offend someone and we have an offense in our heart and heart and heart, then we're a murderer. Do you realize that people that want to go on about, oh, you know, you're talking too much grace and this is hyper grace and all this other stuff. How ignorant. Because Jesus upped the bar. He didn't say, oh, now everything's okay. I'm, I'm going to forgive you. No, he upped the bar to where now if you look upon someone with lust in your heart, you're an adulterer. If you are angry at your brethren or your brother or you got carrying around anger in your heart and you become offensive with your mouth and your deeds, you're a murderer. How is that hyper grace? What are we talking about? We're held to a higher standard. We got more to repent of. We got more to rend out of our own hearts. God help us. Have we been this blind that we'd rather go back to legalism and finger pointing and finger wagging? And actually contributing to death, whether it be spiritual 
or something so dark that is in someone else that eventually will go and do a physical murder? We're in trouble, guys, if this is what we believe. This is what Jesus said when he said, meant when he said, you know, you see a telephone pole or you see a little speck in someone else's eye, but you got a telephone pole coming out yours. We could sit here and find, let, just let God reveal the truth of ourselves. He's going to let us come to the end of ourselves. We can sit there and deceive ourselves and make ourselves think we are oh so holy. But nothing is more farther from the truth if we've not gone through this process and understand what Jesus was saying and did. We have more to repent of than the person that's out there that's not covered by the blood. Do you understand that? Lord, help us. So, if we think that this uh, verse doesn't cover us, we got another thing coming. So we should appreciate, we should appreciate grace all the more. Jesus was radical. Jesus was so intense in his message and his walk that the legalistic Pharisees desired to physically kill him. There's nothing new under the sun. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, the, the heart of the Pharisee will be in us. It's dangerous. So, your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue hath uttered, muttered perverseness. There's so much being said here. He's talking about murmuring, growling, and you're, you know, muttering. You do that kind of under your breath. You know that? And it doesn't necessarily mean anger. It can be in pleasure or anger. It can be even speaking poetically, singing elaborately, but it can sound oh so smooth as butter, but it's death. It'll tell you to even meditate and contemplate on those thoughts. This is what your flesh does. This is in us. And we need Jesus to totally remove it. It's a virus. And it gets in the heart from the flesh. Soothsaying. It also comes from necromancers, mysticism. That's what that's what the really the core of the human human spirit is without Christ. It's evil. It's dark. There is no good thing in it. Death, perversion, twisting. This is why New Age is so dangerous. It's death. It's like a, you know, God, when we're in this Holy Spirit and we can hear God's voice, it's like a still, small voice. But Satan has that little, slender, low, little murmuring that goes into your heart. You don't even know where these ideas come from. And you know it's it's not even anything you've heard. It's just something coming up out of you. And it's speaking shades of death. You know, those foreboding little thoughts that enter our minds sometimes. And if we're not taking it back into the obedience and the captivity of the mind and heart of Christ, it will grow like a virus. And then we'll start offending people and we'll start calling people out and we'll start speaking death all the while standing there saying we're a child of the most high God and we're saved. God help us. And then eventually, you know what it leads to? It leads to plots and plans for us in our minds to conspire. Well, I think I'll tell her a thing or two. I think I'll tell him a thing or two. I, I got to say this. 
or I'm going to go about this this way and I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get this result and I'm going to get the, you know, that's how we are. Wicked. It's wickedness. So just remember, I told you about wizards that peep the other day. Wizards that peep. Hmm. And then tweet. We got all these tweets. We got all this social media. Everybody's just got to type, got to type. Not think before they type. Not check their own spirit and check their own heart. They got to type it. And they're speaking words of death. Even, a bit, But it's going upon themselves. Yes, they're offending others. And it can, it can even influence others to do things that are so wicked and dark out of pain. This is the trick of the devil. He sends offenses so that we take offenses in and then we become the offender, the murderer by the tongue. Oh, do we not understand this? What's, so what's the new craze? Tweet, tweet, tweet. Trump does it. They all do it. It's just, everybody's just speaking death. Hmm. I got more to reveal to you too on the whole Trump Cyrus thing. Remind me if I forget. Somebody bring it to my attention, because but I'm going forward here. And then he goes on to say that none calleth or crieth, cry out for justice, righteousness, nor any pleadeth in truth. They confide in confusion and speak vanity. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Well, guys, <laughs> do you remember the criers? They used to go out and cry out to the people, warn them. Especially, especially those that were preachers that published the gospel through their own lips, preached the gospel, mentioned it, would cry out for the aid of God. You know, the herald of a prophet, the cry of a prophet, Pleading, pleading for God on God's behalf to speak to the people. You know, like Daniel was praying in repentance for himself and his nation. You know, like Jonah had to repent for himself and then go Preach and prophesy and plead with Nineveh? To speak truth about justice and integrity for deliverance, for true deliverance, to be spared? Where's that voice? Where is it? No, we've become numb. We've become numb to where we turn the channel or we don't want to read about a murder of a child or an innocence. We can't, oh, I can't take it. Can't take it. I don't want to hear this. We're not looking. We're not getting on our knees. We're not crying out to God. Please, Lord. Why are we not covering? Why are we not interceding for these acts of darkness? It's a virus. And we're standing claiming to be washed in the blood of the Lamb with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're not, we're not praying. We're not pleading. We're turning our eyes to it. Turning our ears off. Nor any pleadeth in truth. He's saying condemn these things. To defend the oppressed or the poor. To defend the cause and the case of the orphan. To contend with mankind. To repent and to avoid punishment and calamity and destruction. They confide in confusion and speak vanity. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Mm. Conce conceive mischief. 
misery, trouble, sorrow, grief, pain, worry, perversion, travail, anguish of the soul, vexation. Sometimes we see it every day. It's socially acceptable to just go spew this poison upon one another. That's what social media is all about. Mm. No, you know what we're worried about? You know what we're worried about? We're not looking at the darkness. It's in everyone to give birth, to devise plots and plans that are not of the truth. No. No. We don't even want to call wickedness wickedness, even when it's in ourselves. Nope. We don't. We just, we have participated in bringing forth more iniquity. And then guess what? Everything we do comes to naught. It's vain. All that hard work we've done is vanity. What we've done in our own power and might. No resolutions, no outcomes that come to anything. Are we not seeing this in our nation? It, are, the resolutions don't even, no one can even like decide on what's right. It's a nothingness. It's empty. It's more sorrow. It's increased wickedness. And it's going to lead to mourning, complete mourning of a nation. You want to know what the root of it is? Because we, as a people, and I'm sorry, but even Christians, cling to our idols. We've called a blessing, prosperity. It's all about the money. It's all about our comforts. It's all about our material possessions, and we want to call those blessings. Oh, no. You know what a blessing would be? It would be to heal this land. For the wickedness and the darkness to stop. But it's not going to. Because we've made wood and stone our God. And we want to call blessings material things. And we want to say, well, good things happen to good people. And bad things happen to bad people. And, you know, if, if all this is on your life, now you must be really bad. Nothing could be further from the truth. Look at Job. But that's what the church has taught us through the prosperity doctrine and it's worshiping wood and stone. And it's going to go down to nothing. And then we've, we're even doing it in politics. People putting politicians up on a pedestal thinking that uh, We're this big, powerful nation and that no one can defeat us. And Oh, Lord, help us. We, we're just so ignorant. So, this word iniquity, uh, that's different here. This is vanity. Things that are in vain because it's related to idols. False idols. And then it says, they hatch vipers, eggs, cockatrice. A cockatrice is a viper, guys. And weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. A oh, lot's being said here, too. When we're not standing on the truth, and we're not... Repenting and calling to attention to us as a body of Christ who are the intercessors when we're not calling it to the attention. And we're all wrapped up in prosperity and all this other stuff. We're going to get a rude awakening. And when we're operating from that, well, guess what we're doing? We're, we're sitting on it. 
we're bringing it to pass, mm -hmm. like hatching an egg, giving life, you know. When it's death. It even, this word hatch, even means to rip up a woman with child. To tear up a city. The birth of an egg. Violent shaking to tear into pieces. It means everything like those three unclean spirits. So this viper, they hatch viper's eggs. It's the serpent, guys. It's the snake. It's a viper. It's a brood of vipers. And what does it really mean when it talks about the viper? It means a horned serpent dragon that bites and devours and those eggs, well, gives birth to more baby serpents. And it's going to destroy and rip to pieces, just like the womb. Just like an abortion, ripping that child out of the womb violently. And where did that come from, guys, anyway? Huh? Where did that thought, that invention of this procedure come from? Well, I can tell you, it came from the fallen angels, and they taught it to mankind, and that is what was going on before the days of Noah. A lot of other things, too, but that's exactly the kind of stuff that was going on in the days of Noah. And it says, they weave the spider's web. Well, when you, what this means by weave, it means a swift motion. It means agitation, to be agitated. This is what it's doing it for. It wants to agitate. And when you agitate something, you're causing it to be stirred up. You know those times when something's agitated, upsets you so bad your blood pressure is just like your face turns red and you're seething and you're burning with what someone just said or did to you? It's time to really check yourself. It really is. Because that's when they're weaving it. And what does the spider do? It tangles. It's very agile. It's swift. And it's spinning, spinning, spinning. And the webs, well, don't we have the World Wide Web? How coincidental. A web is the house of a spider. It's basically what it is. And it's a thread. It's a film. It's a web. It's trenches. It's pits. It's walled up. It's casting a soul into the pit. That pit that Satan has dug for you, for me, to bury us alive in. And that is the destiny of our flesh if we're not completely in Christ and taken his mind and his heart and picked up our cross and followed him and die to yourself daily means to die to your own will, to die to that carnal mind. Because the flesh is going into the grave. It's going back to the dust and the dirt that it came from. And it also means to cast forth a flood, to spin this web, a web, cast forth a flood. Yeah, there's a flood of evil on this earth. It's being dumped out daily. It's like the complete cork has been pulled off the bottle of darkness, depravity, evil, sin, murder, every filthy bird, every dark demonic spirit is getting dumped out of the bottle onto this earth. And it says, he that eateth of their eggs dieth. It kills the soul. This is what kills souls. It consumes. It devours. It feeds on for food. It's cannibalistic. Are human beings right now in society, we as a society, are we not devouring one another? Oh, I'd say we are. Some even literally. Well, it starts by taking this kind of stuff into our heart. And then it becomes an offensive. 
we get offended. And then when we don't lay that down and rend it, well, because it gets offspring and it starts multiplying like little baby serpents. And we can be the one be causing the offense. See, that's how Satan works. He causes an offense. He offends. And then we become an offender if we don't lay it down in the, in the discipline of Christ. That is why he said it on the cross, when they, when they put him up on that cross, before he gave up the ghost, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If he would have got angry, he would have never been qualified to fulfill what he did on the cross. And he that eateth of their eggs will die, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. That's exactly what I was just saying. So like, say someone offends you, and then you go and attack. And you just let them have it with your tongue, with your you do you realize the power that's in our hearts and our tongues? Words do wound. And then it just it's like a, it's like a cycle. It's just like the abuse cycle. And that's the truth. Abuse can be a cycle. It has to be broken. It's like a curse. It is a curse. And then the abuse becomes the abuser. We see this in we see this in pedophilia. We see this in molestation of children. It just, it's, it becomes a cycle. So, when it's crushed, it retaliates, takes on vengeance. Here. But look, we have the opposite here. Jesus said in Luke 10, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. How does he give us that power? Because we walk in his might and his peace. We don't, we're wise as serpents, but we're harmless as doves. We're not going to take that offense and then throw it back. Crush open the egg and give birth to more baby serpents. No, 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 no. This is how we defeat it. Because it's going to break out. It'll hatch. And it'll come right into another viper. And what is a viper, guys? It's a venomous snake. Serpents are venomous. We're talking about venomous. Not some little harmless, non-venomous snake slithering around. I'm talking about a venomous snake. That that poison, unforgiveness, not rending your heart, will become that venom. And you're drinking your own poison. Because you're not giving, you're not being obedient. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are the works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Well, what's what's a garment? It's your raiment, it's your robe, it's your clothing, it's your apparel. What, it, what is our apparel as the body of Christ? We are to wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb. And out of our faith in Him and through Him is our righteousness, which directs our acts, which weaves our robes. It's through Him. He does it all. He cleans us up. He conducts us. And we must be obedient in that. No, we're not perfect. He's doing a process in us. And the very first thing we got to do is understand to rend our hearts. That we have to come to the conclusion and be adults and realize that in our flesh, in our own will, these are the things that are in us and this is the result. So that, oh, I've never been a bad person, I'm not a bad person, uh, I do good things, I, I don't, you know, throw it out the window. 
This is what's in your flesh. Be a mature Christian. Admit it. This is why you need your Savior. This is why you need, and I need, our Him to clean us up. We don't want to be found with strange apparel. Because that's what's going to happen. These people will have strange apparel. They will not be in their robes that Christ gave them. They will be naked, exposed, pillaged, no covering, because there's only one covering, and that's the blood of Christ, and we should be pleading it for humanity. We really should. And they're not going to be able to cover themselves in darkness anymore. What's a roach do? You know, it goes and hides in the dark corner. It's not going to be able to hide itself anymore because the light of the truth of Christ is going to expose all things. And that is why we have to make sure we are doing this process of rending our hearts and dying to that carnal man every day. That hard, that what's in our hardened hearts, getting it out, rip it out, rip it out, rip it out. You're not perfecting the flesh. No, he's perfecting your faith. The flesh is going into the grave. He's perfecting your faith. He's perfecting your heart, arming it with his mind, his heart. Because they can't cover themselves in the darkness anymore to hide their bloody deeds. Nope. The evil is going to be revealed in the light. And then what happens? Hmm. He says they run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their highways. The way of peace they know not. And there is no righteousness in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. You know what? If we've not experienced that peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding, when all hell is breaking loose and all of a sudden he just calms your spirit and your mind and your heart, that's the power of him. Then you know there's still some of this in us. Hmm? Yeah. Ah, oh, now what's happening here in chat in verse nine? Oh, this is this is the confession of the nation of Israel. This is their confession. This is them admitting finally their faults. It's a beautiful thing, but it, the truth hurts, right? So now Israel is coming. To the conclusion of the truth. And this is what they say. And believe me. You think this isn't for ourselves. One is greatly, greatly mistaken. They say, therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth righteousness overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. Yeah, that's how we are when we do not have the truth and the power of Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. And when we're not operating fully in that, this is true. We grope for the wall like the blind and we grope as if we had no eyes. Oh, what did we just have brought before our eyes in this nation when I told you and shared with you about the girl that dug her eyes out? at the church in Greenville, or Anderson, South Carolina. Oh, he's showing us something, guys. I hope we can see. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the darkness. We are in desolate places as dead men. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. We roar. All like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for righteousness, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. 
and our sins testify against us for our transgressions are with us and as for our iniquities we know them in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God speaking oppression and revolt conceiving and uttering the heart uttering from the heart the words of falsehood and righteousness is turned away backward and justice standeth afar off for truth is fallen in the street and equity and equity cannot enter yea the truth is found missing and he that departeth from evil is liable to be outlawed and the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no righteousness and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness it sustained him this is Christ this is him bring this is God's arm bringing salvation to the man Jesus Christ for he put on righteousness as a coat of mail and a helmet of salvation upon his head and he put on the garments of avenging for clothing and was clad with jealousy as a cloak according to their deeds accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries recompense to his enemies to the islands which is the maritime countries he will re repay recompense this has everything to do with the beast guys so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like the flood this is coming guys these days are coming it's happening it's beginning spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard or a banner against him and a redeemer the Messiah shall come on behalf of Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob saith the Lord this is even this is his body and this is even the natural seed that is the remnant that he's preserved that will come awake at the end of the fullness of the Gentiles it's everything because Jesus is going to return and he's going to put the whole house of Israel together the way he designed it to be his church his body as for me this is my covenant with them saith the Lord my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of thy seeds seed saith the Lord from henceforth and forever and then chapter 60 is going on and talking about the light the glory shining forth of Israel's glory and the glory of the Lord because he says for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the peoples but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the nations shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together they come to thee thy sons the Israelites shall come from far and thy daughters the Israelites shall be carried on the shoulders then shalt thou see and shall be lightened and thine heart shall praise and open with joy because of the abundance of the rich seafaring people shall be turned unto thee the fullness the wealth the resources of the nation shall come unto thee what's he saying here Jesus Christ returns he defeats those nations that came against God those things that set up in the beast system that robbed all of us that oppressed us that possessed us that deceived us that tricked us that taught us to teach to to worship idolatry and not our Lord our God in truth yeah God's people will trample down that system his body will trample down that system is ashes and all those things the glory of God's kingdom of Christ is going to be fulfilled and for a thousand years he will rule and reign and he's gonna be doing something even magnificent there in that thousand years and I'm not here to debate 
all the little things about the millennium that people has different opinions and ideas because you know what? It's going to be the way God says it's going to be. And we're in the flesh right now. We're still here in the flesh and we can't comprehend the vastness, the greatness, the glory of God. He's defeating the enemies of his creation. He's defeating those that destroyed the earth. He's defeating them. And I can tell you, there is one thing that will not rise, and it will be those Rephaim. It will be those spirits of the giants that possessed and oppressed and possessed humanity. He's going to do something so magnificent. Yes, he is. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Because he's rising up his kingdom. And if we're not careful, you know, he'll become even a stumbling block to his own if we're blind to his truth. Christ was a stumbling block to the original seed. And we do not want to fall into that. Well, I told you that I had something to tell you also that I found out very interesting. It's related to Trump and Cyrus and all this hubbub. And I'm just going to keep it short and sweet, but I'm just going to tell you something I found so weird and ironic. The name Cyrus actually means... Possess thou the furnace, as in God is a consuming fire, okay? And the name in Hebrew is pronounced Koresh. Yes. As in the name David Koresh at Waco. It ended up in a fiery inferno and they all passed away. The women, the children, all his followers that were in there son, which he had named Cyrus, by the way, and David Koresh believed that he was the anointed lamb of God, which anyone that knows their Bible or believes in the true, one true Yeshua. Mm -hmm knows that there's only one Lamb of God, which is Jesus, that was sacrificed on the cross. And they all went to a fiery death. Destruction. And now, we have 25 years later, Someone being called this again. So, what I find really weird is when you look at some of the things that went on with Branch Davidians, David Koresh. He was out to the Bible for years. I'm not saying he was perfect. He was kind of weird. He was a Seventh Day Adventist. He left the church. And he went to Israel, to the Holy Land, and supposedly had some kind of a awakening, spiritual awakening. And he started being able to recite the Bible <laughs> by memory. And then it wasn't long, I guess, after that. And he became 
kind of obsessed and totally deceived that he was this called Lamb of God. He had to procreate for his children to fulfill this wedding and the family and all this whacked out stuff. And if that isn't Matthew 24, I don't know what is, but we all know how that ended. So here, here we are 25 years later in the Sanhedrin, and those that are temple council, whatever you want to call them, are putting out this token or coin the Sanhedrin and the temple movement, quote unquote, okay, are putting out this coin that has Trump and King Cyrus. And it's quoting Isaiah 44, Trump is their King Cyrus. Koresh. We know how this is going to end, guys. It's going to end in a fiery furnace. Amazing. When you read Isaiah 44 and you look at it, and you look at the truth of what it's saying in Isaiah 44, it really, it was written before, okay, before God anointed King Cyrus, King of Persia, which I find is really ironic anyway. Um, we know that's going to be the ram in the end times, but he, Isaiah and this prophecy was written before that. And they used that scripture as just as a type. There's other documented things about King Cyrus in there. But the truth of Isaiah 44, the truth, is it's talking about Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. And, you know what, I'm just going to read it because it shows exactly what's happening. It's prophesied. And it's quite amazing to know that they're making a covenant with death and hell. And remember, East hates the whore, the harlot, hates her, Jerusalem, hates her, hates her people. And he it's going to burn her with her flesh with fire. I mean, think about it. Okay? So let's, let's read Isaiah 44. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and fashioned thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, which is the pet name for Israel, who, who I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's. And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel. And his kinsman, Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. Yeah. Is there any misidentifying who this is? I am the first, I am the last, I'm the Alpha, the, I'm the Omega, I'm the kinsman, Redeemer, the King of Israel. I mean, that's Jesus Christ there, guys. And who, as I shall call and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I established the everlasting nation of Israel? 
and the things that are coming and which shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no rock, I know not any. They that fashion a graven image are all of them emptiness. And the fashioners desirable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses. The makers and worshippers see not nor know that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a god or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and he's faint. The carpenter stretched out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it with planes. He marketh it out with the compass, and marketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He hews down cedars, and takes the cypress and the oak, which he strengthened for himself among the trees of the forest. He planted an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take of the wood thereof and warm himself. Yea, he will kindle it and bake bread. Yea, he maketh a god and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down thereunto. He burneth part of thereof in the fire, and with part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth the roast and is satisfied. Yea, he warms himself and says, Aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire. And the residue thereof he maketh into a god, even his gra graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my god. They have not taken note, nor understood, for he hath smeared their eyes, and that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none reflecteth, none bringeth back to his heart, neither is there knowledge nor discernment to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to a log of wood? No, none of them think about it. None of them saying it. He feedeth on the ashes. A deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant. And Israel, because of being the everlasting nation, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as thick cloud thy rebellions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing ye, O heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, you mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith the Lord, thy kinsman, Redeemer, and he that fashioned thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself that frustrateth the signs and tokens of the liars, the false prophets of the heathen, and maketh diviners, which are astrologers, make them mad. They turneth accounted wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish, that conformeth the word of his prophet, confirmeth the word of his prophet Isaiah, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited into the cities of Judah. You shall be rebuilt, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. That saith to the Euphrates on which Babylon was built, Be dry, and I will dry up the rivers. That saith of Cyrus, He, capital He, capital H-E, 
is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Then he goes on to talk about the anointed Cyrus. He's talking about Jesus Christ. He's talking about the one and only Jesus Christ. And yes, King Cyrus Koresh was a type, just a type of this coming into fruition. And boy, does Isaiah 44 tell you exactly what's happening and what's about to come. He's going to disannul their covenant with death and hell. But Jerusalem is going to be totally consumed with fire. And isn't it just amazing that there's a connection between all this that you just can't even make up? Well, I just wanted to bring that to your attention because it just blew me away. It is what it is. So, my brothers and sisters, if we've fallen short, we all have. Get up. Keep going forward. Pressing forward in your Lord and Savior. Tying yourself to Him like an umbilical cord. Tie yourself the supernatural rope prepare yourself for his coming because he is coming and I don't care if you've fallen short you were deceived you misunderstood I don't care I don't care just keep going forward keep running that race Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith he's leading us he's guiding us he's going to bring us through this He's doing something so magnificent. He's showing us. He's showing us the times. He's showing us the signs. His return is about near. He's going to lay down his enemies. He's going to defeat that evil that has risen up and is rising across this earth and in Jerusalem. We have the victory, my brothers and sisters. So keep pressing forward. I don't care if you feel like your arm is falling off. I don't care if you feel like your leg had to get cut off. I don't care what you feel your condition is. You press forward in him. He is faithful. Let no man deceive you. Praise, praise, praise his holy name. Worship him in truth. Lift up his holy name. Sing his praises. Praise him in the hard times. Praise him in the storm. Praise him in the days that seem so dark. Cover your brothers and sisters. Pray for those that are hurt. Pray for those that are being totally chewed up in the darkness. Pray for them. Cover them. Do not allow their offenses to be absorbed into your heart. We defeat this by not absorbing in the poison, but conquering it in love and covering and prayers and praise to our one and only true King, our one and only true kinsman redeemer, our one and only true Lamb of God, Yeshua. Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. As he is coming to save, and he is coming to redeem, and he is coming to restore, and he's coming to set up his everlasting kingdom. God bless, brothers and sisters. Love to you. Stay strong.